everyone, welcome to the life of Twee. For my new thing for the week, we're here at the North Carolina Glass Center. We're gonna be taking a flame shop, doing some torch work to melt some glass and make our own keepsake marble, pendant, or ornament. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Anybody do any kind of glass blowing or glass work, flame shop work before? What was it like? What was your experience? How did everything turn out? And by the way, please subscribe to the life of Twee so that you're updated on the latest adventures. We have pendants, twisty icicle ornaments, or marbles. These are the kind of just the round, basic ovals, or kind of a traditional. It's a, a propane oxygen torch. It's small, but it's mighty. Ooh. And so, uh, looks pretty hot. This is the uh, propane by itself. Watch what happens when we add the oxygen to it. Ooh. So it just got real hot. Um, wow. I got this tungsten tape here, and I can point as you can see, uh, it's real hot. This is about 3,400 degrees right here, um, right in the heart of the flame. And so, quite hot. We've got our safety water over here. Um, you can dip our tools in, our fingers, if we need to, hopefully we don't have to, right? Um, so just be mindful uh, around the torch. Don't reach underneath it. Go around if you need anything. Okay. If you have anything hot, uh, place the hot end facing away from you. We've got a okay. tool rack. This is cement table, so you're good. Uh, when you're working, Maybe work over the table rather than working over your lap. Yeah. We're starting with this clear rod, 12 millimeter glass. And uh, basically I'm just gonna toast the marshmallow, more or less. Okay. Gonna roll it in the flame. Are we getting it like charred or like nice golden? <laughs> the result will be quite different. Okay. Hopefully we don't char it. That is my marshmallow technique actually it's like light it on fire blow it out light it on fire blow it out wow. one more time done <laughs> cool and eat yeah uh, but this is uh you can see as the glass it starts to heat up it'll start to glow it'll start to melt and basically what i'm doing is i'm just slowly rotating so that i get even heat all the way around and I'm also turning the heat of the blob from dripping off to one side. So as this form mass starts to gather, it's almost like honey on a spoon. You know, so I just have to kind of turn it. Notice I'm not going too fast. Also, I'm angling up into the fire. I would say this is position one. So this is like home base. So you're at a right angle to the flame, I'm hitting it sideways, and the glass is level. This is what I call position two, and I'm just angling it so that the gravity will pull that blob back, causing it to increase. And so this is how we make our form. I'm using a very small piece. This is gonna end up looking like a wand because I'm just trying to be economical with our glass. I will give you a much larger piece and you'll have two hands, you'll have room for two hands, which I suggest for you all. Being beginners, it's much easier to keep the points of this right in the glass, uh, right in the heat where it needs to be. So this thing has grown as I've been sitting here chatting and it's a, it's a good, that's at least a small right there. You can go small, medium, or large, whatever you like. <clears throat> the next step is to roll it in this crushed colored glass, we call Frit, F-R-I-T. So get it nice and hot, and then I'm gonna go over here and roll it in. And so right down the spout here, and as I roll it in there, you see it sticks to the surface, just like uh, sugar crystals or sprinkles or something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I throw it back in the fire, and you can see how the flame reacts to the different minerals and metal oxides. That's cool. Yep, it glows. You know, if you lift your glasses now and then 
go back, you see what they do. They take that big orange flare away. They do. So you can see, so you can see what you're doing, yeah. So after uh, going in the color, probably you all will dip multiple times. You know, heat it and go back in, melt it a little bit, go back in until you get the amount of color you want. This is just a demo, so I am, I'm just doing uh, one dip. <clears throat> the next step, after everything is pretty much melted in and soft again, I'm gonna do the mashers. So these are the flattening device. Going to heat it up and go from the top. One, two, three. And squish. It's like the marshmallow then. Yep. Wow, that's so cool. Is that cool? So you get like the world's hottest lollipop, essentially. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go and cook those in, smooth out the surface. It takes maybe 10, 10 seconds a side. Heat it, take it out and look. And that side looks pretty good. I'll flip and then I'll cook the other side. So you all will do this part and then I'll hop in and put the loop in at the end. So this is the basic pendant form. Um, do you know what you want to do? You said you were thinking about the leaf. Yeah, you'd have a different squisher then for the leaf, right? No, we actually, we start the same way, mm -hmm. but if we want to do a leaf, what we'll do is uh, I'll use this glass rod and kind of connect it and then stretch it. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then tap that off. And then uh, we'll go in and we have a big graphite block. This is compressed graphite. And we have our very specialized glass tool, AKA butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> the miracle of stainless steel. So uh, I'm just gonna heat this up and actually use it like a cutting board and just go oh, in there. Okay. And... So in that way, I got the middle line oh, in there huh. already. Um, I'll spot heat maybe that lower half. And I could go in there and like, that helps, it's not necessary, but I have, I found the noises definitely help. Absolutely. And then, uh, yeah. so this is all done with a knife, but then you can also, if you like, you can use the scissors. Many people don't realize you can actually cut glass with a pair of shears. So I'm gonna heat this up and cut, 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 cut. I'm also, I'm making this look easy, go pretty fast. That might take you three heats. You know, heat it up a little bit, cut once or twice. Heat it up a little bit, cut once or twice. You can see how there's a little bit of a difference. These edges are a little bit more open, these are closed. And so just variations on the forms you can get doing the leaf. Yeah. I think I do want to do the leaf. That's yeah. cool. And then if you want at the end, you could use these uh, other graphite tools to just press and move and give yeah. it a kind of organic looking leaf wiggle. And then uh, the very end, I'm gonna come in and put a loop on it for you. Um, the loop is pretty tricky and so uh, I'll do that. I'm just gonna uh, lay this one aside. We got another leaf wand here. Cool. And then it'll be your turn. Um, call the party mix. Party mix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who doesn't want party mix? Don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> it's not Czech's party mix. Red. Uh, oh, and take your glasses off oh. while you're looking, so that will yeah, it is different. Change the color stuff. Mm -hmm. The lids uh, might be loose. And the colors will pretty much be that. Like, or does it change slightly or get darker? This you is know a what sample. Mean? So this is oh, a sample of the okay, red. Okay, so it's pretty true. Pretty true, yeah. So what it is. This is orange, orange, and yellow. And so there's samples for almost all of them. The only one that changes is the uh, double amber purple. It changes from just that pale looking to kind of an amber. This one is. Okay, oh, that one is like the blue. I can't, that, that blue is kind of cool. The blue is nice, yeah. It's a very solid, dense color, cobalt.
classic color. Of I'm thinking like blue and this red. Yeah, blue and red. Maybe. That's the blue right there. I think blue by itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that. Why not? Nice. Yeah, so you basically just uh, toast the marshmallow. I'd use two how hands. How close or how far? Or? Um, you can get closer than you feel comfortable <laughs> okay. at the moment. Okay. <laughs> right about there. Okay. Yep, that's very good. Just spinning it? Yep, just spinning it nice and slow. Your chair has wheels, so you could move that to wherever you're comfortable. You can see it starting to ball up. I can see it. You want a small, medium, or large size, you think? Um, maybe like medium. Medium is good size. I know for sure I don't want large. Okay. It'd be too dangly. Yeah. So maybe somewhere the size of like a, nick a nickel. Okay, yeah. Maybe a little bit bigger. That should be about a medium. So it's coming along. You can roll a little bit slower. Okay. And, um, and if you could focus, there's a little bit you're that you're out a little bit and you're also kind of in and out of the plane a little okay. so if you hold it right at that spot and speed seems pretty good pause for a moment now and let that thing fall okay now turn so you see how you can just adjust your speed and let that thing fall onto center slightly okay yeah and also you might notice it's starting to grow a little bit more already yes and so, in a few more minutes, I think, we'll be at the size that we're looking for. It looks like E.T.'s finger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It's, uh, the glow is very distinctive. You can see how the light actually travels through the glass rod, but the heat doesn't. The glass yeah. is actually a good insulator, but that's the fiber optics working, so it actually passes light. Yeah, that's um, cool. Through. So you're going very good, very steady, mm -hmm. it's very round, and I'd say it's a very small medium at this point. Okay. And so if you want it to be a little bit bigger, just go a little bit more. Right this way. So I just a reminder, when you go to roll in the frit, kind of go down the spout. Okay. And then do a little press and turn, press and turn, press and turn, like this. Let's say you could go another way. Okay. Is my old color first? Uh oh. Press and turn, press and turn, press and turn. And, and the other one? Nope. Oh. One color at a time, okay. and then back on the fire. And that's about all you'll get. The glass stays hot for only, and I mean the hot, like really hot. It stays workable for maybe five seconds max. Probably three to five seconds. So you got a lot of color on there that was really good, but then you have to go heat it up again. Uh -huh. And then you could roll it into the other color. We only roll one color at a time so that we don't cross-contaminate, mix the blue and the red. Oh, okay. So well, that looks pretty good. You could roll it in the red, I'd say. Press and turn. Mm -hmm. You notice how that red is changing colors. I see it. Yeah. It's actually, as it heats up, it turns like black or dark uh -huh. gray. That's good. You can go back to the fire now. Just let me know when. <laughs> when I could do it. I'd say you could go now. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I press, the thing like bends, like I can see it. It does, yeah. And you, you sometimes you can use that to your advantage where you press it back onto center. So if it's a little droopy, you can just press it and kind of center it that way. Yeah. So you can roll it in that red now. So you're doing good. It's uh, we're gonna melt it in nice and smooth now. Okay. And so we got a good amount of color on there. And so just roll it, and uh, pretty soon we'll be ready for the match. Cool. It probably wouldn't be messed up. Just different. You know, people have different levels of. Uh, you know, some people are like, I want to do everything myself, and other people are like. Oh my God, please take this from me right now, you know? <laughs> right, right. So uh, you can put that on the table. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm like holding it like this. Like that, yeah. Okay. 
And uh, even though it's awkward, you can hold it this way. This way you can see how thick it is. Okay. Or how thin when you mash it. Like how hard will I be pressing? Medium hard. It doesn't need to be. We could do it again if you want it thinner. So it's not like only one time deal. Nothing critical. But it squishes. Very soft at first and then it sets up quick. So you'll see. It goes from uh, Mars to Pan to like rock candy. Okay. In like two seconds. Right. Okay, ready? So we'll do three. Two, one. And the top and squish. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. That that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Ah, oh, so cool. How about that, huh? Great. Just pressed it in my thumb. And yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm going to attach this and just stretch this out a little bit and then I'll hand it back to you. I'll get it started and when it gets to a point where you're happy, just say when. Alright. So cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Like it's so malleable, but it's like, it's glass. What the heck? Is that wild? Mm -hmm. How's that work? A little more? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. It's really cool. That's cool. That's nice, yeah. Good. Tap it off. There we go. So now we have this thing. And this is the next step. So we go in. We got that. The uh, butter knife over here. Oh, it's hard as well. Let me know. Scalpel. Yeah. I'll hand it to you. Forceps. <laughs> Sutures. I suggest once you get a hold of this, do a little dry run so that just so you can get comfortable with what you're going to need to do. Because when you heat it, you only have three seconds or four seconds, right? So I'm going to spot heat, get it, and put it, and then do it. Whatever design, and then heat it again. And then heat it again, in and out. And this is like the cutting board. And, but again, it's, it's a little awkward because you have to do that. But. Okay. And so yeah, if you want to do that middle vein, just hit that middle. You can go ahead and do it and you'll see what you get. Which is uh, just a little bit and you can do it again and do it again. And it pretty much stays right where you put it. That looks good. That was a good one. I can see it moving like a, like a jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm cutting into a fruit snack. It is like a, yeah, like a fruit roll-up or something almost. Like a, okay. And we'll, you know, at the end, if you want it, a little twisted or bent or, you know, with a wave, put some waves in it. And then now to do like little branches off the side. Uh-huh, like, you like. Or whatever. Yeah. It's your leaf, so you get to decide the artistic uh, aspect of it. <laughs> you can see as you cut, it's kind of like puffing it a little bit and giving it more of an organic shape. We do have those shears if you want to do the shears, but the uh, you can do the whole thing with that if you like. Does it go good? It's cool. I'm trying to do part like with the glasses and part not because you can it like you can really see the glass and the flame, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like hot too. It's like. shoulders a little bit. 
It's a little more than we need, so I'll take some of that off with my tweezers. I can put this. Oh, that's so cool. Right oh, where that's I, how you did it. You uh -huh. didn't need the hole puncher thing. No. You want it, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. We we do that sometimes, but usually I do this. For the leaf, then I can see that makes uh -huh. more sense, so to speak. And so I blast that with heat. That's so cool. I want to make this joint good and connected, but also I have to make sure that that loop doesn't melt close. And so I'm standing on guard with my reamer tool. Is this going to be on a chain, do you think? Or uh, I'll probably, cord? It'll probably be like a cord, not a chain. Okay. I can really see like the leaf marks. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And the uh, the colors will return. They change and they look very different. Um, the red is going to be almost invisible right now, but when it mm -hmm. cools, it will it will return. All right. How's that look? That looks great. Nice. Wonderful. There you go. Mm. Sweet. Beautiful. Awesome. So I'm gonna uh, get a little flash of heat, and then I'm gonna warm up my tweezers, and uh, I'm gonna put it in the kiln. Everything that we make today has to go in the kiln and slowly cool. That's why it's picking up later. It's picking like, up later, right? Not today. It'll be you know, like tomorrow. Or whatever. That's right. So it's like a slow, controlled descent in heat, so that the material can get used to its new shape. It'll be stronger. If we just left it out, it would might pack, you know. There we go. We grab and tap. Comes right off and then I torch the bottom. Eat voila. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. You're so welcome. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. And uh Cooling down in the 1,050 degree oven. That was such a cool experience. I got marks here from my safety glasses, but um, thank you so much to our instructor Tony and to the North Carolina Glass Center. I don't have the finished product to show you right now because he still has to finish it off and bake it in the kiln. So it'll be ready for pickup after 24 hours, but in my case, it'll be shipped to me in Florida. It was really hot in there, but it was so cool to see how sort of like malleable the glass got. I mean, at times it was like a little gummy. It was all squishy and everything. And I, I sometimes felt that it was gonna like droop and, and just like fall off, like melt off. It was really cool. <laughs> what did you think? Have you ever taken any kind of classes like this before? Or do you yourself specialize in glass fusing or glass blowing or uh, flame work? Please let us know in the comments below. And again, please subscribe to the Life of Twee. Thanks for joining. See you next time.